Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton from ID People. I'm here at ID World in Rio de Janeiro, and I'm joined by Spasibo Kabi. Kabi. Yes. Yeah. Uh, from the South African Post Office. Good to see you. You gave a presentation yesterday. Start by telling me the title of the presentation and, and what it was actually about. Basically, the presentation was about uh, how have we discovered uh, the right strategic uh, execution process for the mail business business unit of the post office. Okay, in South Africa. And and um, what drove you to to that decision? Was it information from the market or trends from elsewhere? Basically, what drove us uh, is that uh, mail as a product has been declining for us from 2008. Okay. For other people, the trend started 10 years Way earlier. That. Yeah. But we were at a situation where our volumes were growing up to 2008. Okay. But from 2008, we found that we were dropping. Okay. As much as we knew that was coming, we found ourselves not really fully prepared. Mm. We had uh, focused our innovation on technology, on security, on transfer, on creating uh, products. But those products that we're creating could not replace the latter business that okay. we were so dependent on. Okay. And how fast, how fast was that decline in 2008? What kind of numbers, percentages did it drop by per year? From 2008, we're floating between 4 and 8 percent of the drop of volumes. Okay. Uh, corresponding with the real growth of volume, if you minus the inflation part. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it was quite, quite dramatic. Yes. Yeah. And um, why do you think that drop in volume was so much later in South Africa than elsewhere? Because certainly in Europe, its postal volumes have been declining probably since 2000. Basically, in terms of technological development, we were always uh, lagging about five years mm. uh, behind uh, Europe in terms of the trend. So you find that uh, what took the mail away in Europe, mm. legislation, yeah. uh, has not arrived. We still have the monopoly in South Africa. Okay. But the technologies, especially the mobile technology, has had an in fact impact of our business. Okay. So the smartphone has created a little bit of problems for us. Okay. But hopefully it's created some opportunity as well. What what have you what strategy have you applied to to resolve the problem? Basically as you highlighted our talk in this is that uh, firstly we change looking at strategy uh, as a process. Mm. We looked at it as a product. So when you look at it as a product uh, we had to find a appropriate life cycle, development life cycle for it and make sure that uh, we create a common language for the whole business at a strategy level. Okay. We have a common language in terms of how we run the operations, mm -hmm. but we had not invested on strategy because we're in a business that is 100 years old, that mm. is matured. Yeah. So we didn't have to think that much. No. <laughs> the business just flew. <laughs> the business was there and it was delivering mail. So. But now we find ourselves in a situation where we have to compete with the environment. Mm. Not only with the competitors, but with the technology alternative channels. Mm. We find ourselves having to fight for the heart of a consumer. Right. Yeah. And it was a different game for us. We yeah. needed to get out of how we always done business. Yeah. And that's why we had to discover a new way of of operating. The yeah. A new manager, a new yeah. Yeah, kind a of new personal mindset, really. out of uh, yeah. Yeah. out of you, all of us. Did you do that by were there were there very substantial changes in the organization? Did a lot of lot of people change or were you able to actually change the culture of the business? We actually Amazingly, did not use any external um, external people to okay. come and assist us. Uh, we sent our own people to do postgraduate studies, and came back and implemented. We had focus on 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 uh, renewing ourselves, mm. so we had a big cultural impact. In fact, our program started to 2010 where we launched it. Mm. 
we okay. actually did not even have a framework of how we're going to do it. We said we are launching a new yeah. strategy, we are going a new direction, and then we had to answer the question how. What direction and how? <laughs> yeah. And what direction? Okay. And have you been able to develop new services and add new consumer value that replaces the, um, the decline that you initially had? Basically, you started to? The interesting part is that uh, the rest of the world, including uh, the group of companies that we belong to, mm -hmm. uh, is that the actually African postal? The, 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 the post office. Yeah. As I said, uh, our focus was on our traditional mm. business. So it's set up in a different business unit, which is mail. Mm. So you'll find that we have a digital business and a financial business. Okay. They have uh, um, mandates that they have to fulfill. So as mail, we're looked on as a business that is about to die. Right. Okay. And us as employees of mail, we yeah, have no such so ambition. <laughs> So with, with that, we had to uh, redefine ourselves mm. and, and reconceptualize ourselves yeah. to say who we are. And we moved our thinking from being a distributor of me to be a connector of people. Okay. Now, when you, say, when you tell everyone that we're in the business of connecting people, our employees, it, it creates a situation where decline of mail is no longer a problem mm. because people the population is increasing. Mm. So if the population is increasing, it gives us More flexibility on, on the product and mm. services that we can uh, conceptualize. Yeah. We have um, started working uh, on a cross-border <coughs> passenger <coughs> service mm -hmm. that will both take care of our mail transportation mm -hmm. and will put transport, uh, passengers to pay for our transportation. Okay. So it's, it's those kind of thinking. We have looked at our universal service obligation differently mm. than we used to be. We used to see it as an obligation. Yeah. Uh, now we see it as our business. Yeah. The way that we, we look at our address expansion to rural areas in Africa, uh, in South Africa specifically, has changed in how mm. we conceive it. We see it as, as opportunity rather than a burden. Yeah. So okay. it has changed the way we look at our mm. business. Yeah, it's a complete change in the way you think, a complete change in philosophy. When you came to this um, position, did you look at what other, other postal services, for example in Africa, or other postal services in the world have done, or did you very much focus on the issues and the opportunities you had internally? As I indicated, initially we were more, before 2010, yeah. we were more worried about copying what others are doing, yeah. looking at what the world is going. Yeah. But we found that as not appropriate. Mm. We found that if we had to really sustain, we have to self-conceptualize mm. properly. And we have to look at our capability and our employees seriously and know what we can do mm. and and get a different ear of the customer yeah and be able to capture what the customer cannot say mm. but he wants yeah and figure out what which we have not fully done yet yeah of course but now uh, our, our search is that uh, there are products that have not that no one is offering mm. that we can look intensely yeah on the customer and find out and serve it and make a lot yeah. of money and don't prepare for our barrier. Absolutely. <laughs> and if you if you think about that, what do you think are the key the key values that as a post office or as a postal organization you're able to offer the public? Hey, there's a position there of trust, isn't there? There's a position there of having a certain amount of infrastructure, whether that's whether that's offices or positions or locations. There there are some key elements to the value that you provide. We, in South Africa, we have um, unparalleled interface points. Mm -hmm. We have 2,500 um, outlets that we can service uh, clients. Mm. So there's a great opportunity there. We, in terms of our logistic infrastructure, we are unparalleled mm. to Korea and, and the latter business. Mm. So we have not fully exploited that infrastructure mm. and it's our intention to to use that over capacity to our advantage 
Okay. And uh, the, as we said, the decline of mail, that was our worry. Yeah. Now we see it as an <coughs> opportunity to fill that space yeah. with something else. With some other and business. still use the capability that we, that we have. Okay. And expand some of the capabilities um, on the periphery of our core capability. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So it sounds like the whole organization now feels much more positive about the future. Instead of managing decline, you're now developing developing an expansion, developing a future business. Is the feeling inside the organization much more positive? Transition is an interesting, it's an interesting uh, journey. Yeah. It's very personal. Mm. Initially, we all um, get jitters yeah. because it's a personal journey. Mm. Uh, so you find that there's been a lot of fear. We have spent actually two years working on leadership. Mm. Just getting the leadership excited with the with the future. Yeah. That is positive. We are continuously working. Now we're at the point where we're getting to our customer interface mm. level to the operator to make him get excited, to make him be able to listen to that customer. Yeah. So between that transition we had a quite a number of upheavals. Mm. We had challenges in terms of resistance that comes with change, yeah. but we are seeing a, a, a leap over. Yeah. In, okay. in, in leadership, um, the executive leadership and the lower levels of leadership. Yeah. So we are starting to, to see a single focus. Yeah. Yeah. In strategy, always the challenge is how do you get a single focus? How do you get everybody gathered together? And yeah. we think that we've got the single, we've got everyone to face the same everyone direction. Everyone facing in the same direction. And change is, change is scary, yes. but change is exciting. It is exciting. Yeah. Once the vision becomes Once the clear. vision becomes clear. And yeah. we had invested quite a lot of time, as yeah. I highlighted to you. We stopped a bit on the technology and yeah. the process and, and the tangible, on that. and we focused on the culture. Yeah, we spent uh, three years now focusing on the culture. Yeah, we are now in the position where we are seeing the results yeah. coming to the tangible. Yeah, and you're focusing now on the on the customer and making it work and making it appropriate for them. Sounds fantastic. Sounds really exciting. Thank you very much for stopping by to chat. I hope we can talk again, maybe next year, and find out what progress is being made and, and what the public perception of, of these changes are. Thank you very much for your time. It's a great pleasure. Thank you.